Welcome back. Okay, back to the fight build today. I think the paintwork is done for one lifetime, don't you? Happy to call that done, underline it until we get to the artwork in the new year. Handlebars today, I want to change some of this furniture. I'm getting rid of these plastic pots. I've never liked these really, even on a sports bike, there's a better solution. I do prefer, wherever possible, the cast in alloy pots like I showed in the last video. I've got a pair of those to fit on the bike today and they are definitely going to be a major improvement to a set of naked handlebars. The two new master cylinders, I'm going to fit the brake and clutch. They have switches, obviously, in the new ones, the two tangs that stick out to put the wiring plugs on. That side will fit straight on because the loom gives me two plugs to put on. This side is not, it's a solid plug, so I'm going to snip that off rewire the loom out here, take some of that wiring out, so there's a little bit of messing around to do with that, so I can plug it in, but once that's done, all plugged in, plumbed in, juiced up and working, with the switches working, then that's absolutely fine, then I can move on to other stuff, but I'm not gonna bite off more than I can chew, I wanna do a good job of this, because the handlebars, well that's your, that's your dash, that's your cockpit, isn't it? So let's get that right first, and see how far we get. Welcome back. too easy okay I just want to preempt a criticism I'm probably going to get if anybody's thinking you should bleed that now both sides and the rest of it there's no need the air was just here I took that off held them out here there's air in the top of the banjos yeah loads of air loads of fluid came out probably down to there maybe for instance or you know who knows but there's plenty of air there but it's all at the top so when you put the new fluid in just bump it back and forwards and as you hold the lever in it will let the air bubble out the top there's no need to pump that down the system and bleed it out through the calipers, risking trapping air bubbles lower down and ending up with a spongy brake operation, which is not cool. If it's solid to start with, all you need to do, put it on, pump in and out once it's done up, and the air will come out the top. That's why I put the camera above so you can see it happen in real time. And there are tiny champagne bubbles now, nothing much, almost none. It's a time consuming thing, probably takes about 15 minutes, but eventually all the air is gone, and that is absolutely rock solid lever. Totally chuffed the bits with that. Now I've got to do, top it up, put a cap on, do the other side.
All right, here we are. Uh, I think you'll agree that isn't only better looking than ever those little plastic pots could possibly have been, chuffed a bit. Something else I really like about them is that they're flat and level with the bars. When you look at so many people who go and buy the second hand off the breakers, off eBay, master cylinders from Bandit 1200, GSX i11, any number of bikes that have got cast master cylinders, what you get normally is these pots will end up slanting inwards when you put them on drag bars because most bars come up and go down for comfort, therefore the caps are nice and flat. The minute you put that to a drag bar, that cap slants inwards. And I've seen it so many times when you look at bikes that have had drag bars fitted, you look at these caps and they slant down in. It looks as bad as the plastic pots in my view, and that's why I put these on, because they're dead flat, they fit absolutely flat with the bar, and that's quite an unusual shape, not something you could find easily. I got these at Wimoto, I found them in their stock list, and they were originally for a Honda CB750. Something that was quite important to stress was this is a twin disc master cylinder. It's very important if you've got twin discs, to make sure you've got a twin disc master cylinder so it pumps enough fluid from the pump, down to the big fat calipers down below. Don't use a single disc master cylinder on a twin disc setup. That could be dangerous. Make sure you use the right one. And that is it. These are absolutely perfect. They're safe for the job. That one's a little shinier than that one. It's not the end of the world. I'll just polish that one up to match. Simple, that job done. Anyway, the next thing is the indicators in the end. So let's get into that. Right, that's them wired in. One more thing. Let's slow them down a bit. Right, from this angle visually, and from this angle, I think you'll agree, it's absolutely superb. I'm so chuffed with that. These look way better than plastic pots would have ever looked. I love the fact that the banjos go on the front rather than on the sides of them. As before, that's given more space here. It's kind of made a, a gap, which looks a little bit nicer. So improvements all the way around, absolutely chuffed a bit. It was a big investment, over 100 pounds for these. 
but for what they are, you'd have paid four times that from the main dealer if you bought genuine ones. If you bought second-hand ones, it's a lottery. Are they gonna need rebuilding? Even if they do, like I said earlier, they'll have that slant to them. They'll never look as correct as they do. So absolutely chuffed with that. The whole front end is now done. I can write that off. Lights working, side light, headlight, main, uh, and dip, horn, indicators, idiot lights, everything. The whole front end is signed off. Now that means the next one will be the rear end. But that one, once it's completely finished curing, wire all the lights in, and could it be that close to a ride? Could it be? Dare we say it out loud? Okay, thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. We'll see you for the next one.